Good day, everyone. I'm Tammy Dana Bashan, Mayor of Rowlett. Joining me, six feet apart, is Ed Balderas, our Emergency Management Coordinator. Thank you for joining me today, Ed. Thank you, Mayor. We want to provide our public the latest information. It is very important to understand that what we talk about today can change quickly. So please stay up to date from our website at rowlett.com forward slash COVID-19 and on our Facebook page, City of Rowlett, Texas. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram. I wanna start off by talking about the various disaster declarations and the specific orders under those declarations. There are three declarations out there right now that impact the residents of Rowlett, each with specified orders. The City of Rowlett, the Dallas County, and the Rockwall County declarations. The important item to note on these is that whatever is the most restrictive orders under each of these declarations is what each of our residents must follow. And this can vary depending on which county you live in. What this means is that if you live in Dallas County portion of Rowlett, you must follow the most restrictive provisions of both the Dallas County orders and the city of Rowlett orders. Same holds true for Rockwell County side of Rowlett you must follow the most restrictive provisions of both the Rockwell County orders and the City of Rowlett orders. However, don't get too caught up in all of that because I've made sure that my citywide orders under the City Disaster Declaration have been compliant with the most restrictive orders of the individual counties. But it is important to understand this because the media is reporting on the county details and not reporting on the individual City of Rowlett details. So I wanna talk about who is making all these decisions that is impacting each of our lives so greatly. Mayors and county judges have the ability to issue disaster declarations in their respective jurisdictions for an initial seven day period. After that, the presiding bodies, city council for cities and county commissioners for counties have the ability to extend those declarations. The Rowlett City Council extended our disaster declaration to April 30th. That end date under our disaster declaration can be rescinded or extended by our city council. The mayor and the county judges have the authority to determine the orders under each disaster declaration, and we can change these orders by making them more or less restrictive at any time during our respective disaster declarations. The current shelter in place orders under the City of Rowlett and Dallas County declarations expire on April 3rd, and for the Rockwell County declaration, they expire on April 15th. But please don't get caught up in all these dates. These are just administrative details as the orders can be extended by myself for the city and by the county judges for the counties. The real story on who is making these decisions is the health officials advising our elected officials. And that is the way it should be. This is about the health and safety of our citizens, as well as the need to be able to manage this outbreak throughout our health system. So Ed, can you please explain who our city health authority is and the role that they're playing in all of this? Uh, yes, Mayor, the, uh, our health authority is Garland Health. Um, they are responsible for monitoring the spread of infectious diseases in the city of Rowlett and also uh, in issuing any orders or directives to those with infectious diseases, including COVID-19, in order to reduce the spread of that disease in our community. And then our, our county has their own health authority. Our state also has health advisors. Is that, am I saying that correctly? Yes. Uh, so Dallas County does have their own health authority. As does Rockwell County? As does Rockwell County and the state as well. Okay. However, the only authority who can supersede our health authority is the state health authority. So Ed, um, help us understand why are these health authorities recommending such drastic measures with these shelter in place requirements? Uh, there are many reasons. Uh, to start off with, uh, COVID-19 is a very highly contagious uh, disease and virus. Uh, it is a novel virus, meaning we do not have any natural immunities to it. Uh, additionally, no vaccine to prevent and no fully vetted antivirals to treat COVID-19 are currently available. 
the virus has mutated and has a greater potential to mutate as a result of greater spread among the population. The elderly and individuals with underlying health conditions are also at very high risk. This is now impacting the rest of the population other than high risk and, a, and to a greater extent uh, than we initially thought. For example, of the cases in Dallas County to date, only 28% were over 60 years old. The health system must also be able to keep up with the number of beds, uh, PPE or personal protective equipment, and ventilators to be able to offer treatment of symptoms to those needing hospitalization. All right, so what I'd like to do now is uh, talk a little bit about our shelter in place and what that means. So I'm going to go over some of the basic provisions. And please know that all this information is readily available on our website. Um, so you don't have to be taking notes here. You can, you can go to our website and find this information. So stay at your place of residence. Only leave for essential business and essential activities. Practice social distancing when you do have to leave your house. Public or private group gatherings of any size are not allowed outside of your individual household members. Non-essential businesses cannot remain open at their place of business, but their employees can work from home. Restaurants can only provide takeout or delivery services. In-person worship services are not allowed. Elective medical, surgical, and dental procedures are not allowed. No visitors are allowed to nursing homes, retirement facilities, or long-term care facilities, except for critical care or end-of-life visitation. And of note, hospitals have implemented their own visitation rules, which may vary hospital to hospital. Essential household activities, which are activities which you are allowed to leave your house for, include healthcare related, grocery or essential supply shopping, or to engage in outdoor exercise within social distancing confines and not in a group setting. If you have any questions about these provisions, you can email the city at cac at rowlett.com or call 972-412-6100. We are also answering questions as they are posed to us on our social media platforms. I'd now like to move to what an essential business is. This is much more complex and detailed. Essential businesses must follow social distancing protocols and allow employees to work from home as much as possible. Here is an overview, but it is best to read the details on our website for more specifics. Healthcare, except elective procedures. Government functions, including emergency services, trash, and recycling. Critical infrastructure, such as transportation, food production and delivery, information technology, including cybersecurity. Financial institutions, critical manufacturing, utility sectors, financial markets, payroll services, and certain construction functions. In the retail category, food and beverage, banks, food delivery services, hardware stores, gas stations, auto repair and supply, laundry service providers. For residential essential services, these include plumbers, electricians, HVAC, and exterminators, cleaning services, pool cleaning, landscape services, real estate services, but only for the purpose of title work and closing, funeral services, mail, shipping, and delivery services. In the public and private education category, the only functions are allowed are ones that facilitate distance learning or provide meals to students on a pickup basis. Other essential businesses include news media, child care, but that has very specific guidelines of no more than 12 children in a specific group in a separate room, and there are other details that you should read. Animal care, including shelters, veterinary care, and pet food stores. Grooming is not allowed unless for the health of the animal. 
Pet daycare is only allowed if it's for employees of essential businesses. Please know the aforementioned list is not exhaustive. Please see our website at rowlett.com forward slash COVID-19 for more details. Also, Dallas County has recently set up an email to use for essential business questions. Please email businesscovid19 at dallascounty.org. Okay, now I would like to shift our discussion to what you should do if you are sick. So Ed, what are the specific symptoms of COVID-19 and what should a person do if they have any of these symptoms? The most common symptoms are fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Uh, however, symptom intensity will range from mild to severe illness and possibly death. Uh, some will not have any apparent symptoms, and additionally, specific symptoms may vary person to person. A physician will determine if your symptoms are mild enough for someone with COVID-19 to go home and provide self-care uh, for that person uh, or to be hospitalized. So if you have um, some of these symptoms and you think you need to call 911, mm -hmm because they're becoming severe, what should a person be telling the 911 operator? Well, first, if, if you do develop emergency warning signs for COVID-19, we want you to seek immediate medical assistance. These emergency warning signs could include trouble breathing, persistent pain or pressure in your chest, confusion or inability to become alert, and or bluish lips or face. Um, again, we do want you to call 911 if you believe that you are uh, experiencing any of this emergency warning signs. Uh, in addition to that, to minimize the risk to both the citizens and our first responders, the Rowlett Fire Department is developing a program to engage in remote screening for all suspected COVID-19 cases. Not only do we believe that this will reduce our risk to citizens and first responders, but also assist with hospital overload and also ensuring the continuity of our EMS services. Uh, with that said, the transport and treatment of those patients will remain consistent with existing procedures, uh, albeit with enhanced protective uh, precautions. And so our emergency uh, responders are wearing the appropriate PPE when it's deemed appropriate in these situations? Yes. And we've also provided uh, PPE to our police officers to use when they deem it's necessary? Yes. Okay. So Ed, what should family members do if someone is sick at home and suspects that they might have COVID-19? Well, first, follow CDC guidelines for caring for someone who is sick. Family members should monitor a sick family member for emergency signs, isolate sick family members to one room, ideally with a separate bathroom, and provide symptom treatment. Again, there are CDC guidelines on the CDC website which provide more detail and we encourage you to follow those. And then those family members within that household should also quarantine themselves? Yes. And there's guidelines there on those periods of quarantine uh, for individuals that are sick that recover and also for family members of sick individuals, is that correct? Yes, and in addition to the guidance available on the CDC website, our health authority will issue uh, instructions on how to properly self-quarantine and for what period of time. And they've issued those uh, provisions, correct? Yes. And those are available on our website? Yes. Okay. Uh, so what do you do if you need to go or take someone to the emergency room at a hospital? Well, first we want to make sure that uh, you call the hospital or emergency room first so that they can inform you on the proper procedures to limit the exposure to other patients and healthcare workers. Uh, do not take yourself or someone else to the emergency without first calling ahead. And if you believe your symptoms are severe enough that you cannot follow this process, then please call 911. What happens if someone tests positive and what happens to the household members and how is our health authority involved in that process? If someone in your household tests positive, our local health authority, Garland Health, will provide you with a health order or directive to self-quarantine and monitor your conditions. And that will be issued to both the positive case and any household members. So how do you get help? If, if you're quarantined and your family's quarantined and you need help, where do, where do we turn? Uh, if your entire household is quarantined, Garland Health will provide you with contact information uh, that you can use to request assistance. So what does a person do if they suspect they have COVID-19 but their symptoms are not severe enough to call the hospital or call 911? Uh, if you believe you have symptoms of COVID-19 and they're severe enough, uh, we want you to first call your physician. Uh, if you do not have a physician, 
Uh, there are drive-through test sites, um, however, there are restrictions on that. The, the two sites uh, include the American Airlines Center, uh, parking lot E at 2500 Victory Plaza, and the Ellis Davis Fieldhouse located at 9191 South Polk Street. Um, those sites are open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the only testing criteria for those sites are shortness of breath, cough, and a minimum temperature of 99.6 degrees or higher. And they've, uh, right now, they've released those age restrictions. Yes. But they have a certain limited number of tests every day, and I know that they have to close down early if they get past their uh, limit on that day. Yes. Now, they will determine on site whether or not you should be tested. Uh, all you need to do is uh, ensure that you minimize the impact to that process by only going if you do show those symptoms just mentioned. So before you had to call ahead, now you just show up, but you have to have those symptoms and they'll uh, look at those symptoms with you while you're in line for that drive-through testing. Yes. And this could change tomorrow, so. Yes. Okay. So how is the city notified about our residents that are tested mm -hmm. positive? Uh, the mayor is called first by our health authority. If the mayor is not available, then I am contacted. That process continues until an authorized official is reached. So what information are we going to share with our public when we have positive cases based on testing? Mm -hmm. Well, we want to minimize the, the impact to positive cases. We want to ensure their privacy and safety, not only of the positive cases, but also of any household members. Uh, to that end, we will provide information on the age range and gender. So we're reporting positive cases every day on our social media and mm -hmm. website. So just talk, not in numbers, because these will change, but mm -hmm. we have a pretty low number of confirmed positive cases mm -hmm. today. What's really out there? Well, due to the limits of the testing capacity, uh, both private and public, uh, we don't know the extent of the spread within our community. Uh, we believe there are additional cases in Rowlett. However, uh, the best thing we can do is to take those uh, social distancing, follow the shelter in place order in order to minimize the, uh, any future spread. Um, again, the, the testing capacity is at a point where not everybody who needs to be tested uh, can be tested. Uh, it's only in those cases where the symptoms may be severe enough to warrant the test that they, they are tested. And quite frankly, there's much evidence out there of people with COVID-19 that have no symptoms. Right. Uh, approximately 80% will show, uh, show other mild or moderate symptoms, and some may not show any symptoms at all. And so you could have COVID-19, have no symptoms, and still be a carrier to other people. Yes, and for that reason, we want to encourage everybody to operate as if they did have COVID-19. Very good. Thank you, Ed. So, Ed, talk about why it's so important to manage the spread of this virus in regards to our health care system. Well, the term flatten the curve has been out there, and what that means is we want to reduce the impact on our health care system. Not only do we have existing uh, normal day-to-day -day emergency uh, situations at hospitals, we, we add this to that, that situation and we have the potential to quickly overwhelm our health care system. Uh, because of that, we want to make sure we protect them by uh, following the shelter in place order, taking the social distancing um, recommendations seriously, uh, and making sure that we limit the exposure to our first responders and healthcare workers. And we got to have enough beds. We, we got to have enough PPE. Mm -hmm. We got to have enough ventilators. Yes, and both the federal and state governments are taking efforts to increase the access to that, and we anticipate there to be uh, additional supplies uh, in the near future here this week and. Hopefully that continues throughout this entire process. So, so next, let's talk about our mm -hmm. local co-ed, what that is, and how people can get help from our co-ed if they need it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, ev everybody remembers the tornado in 2015. After that, we, as a city, established a long-term recovery committee to help with the long-term needs of the tornado survivors. That was a very effective program. It was a way for us to bring all the churches and other organizations in the city who wanted and could provide assistance. Uh, in a more coordinated fashion uh, to eliminate duplication of benefits and effort. Um, after that, we did deem it necessary to establish a long-term uh, system to provide that and have that system established ahead of a disaster. Uh, fortunately, we had that process already started to, to some extent uh, before this COVID-19 uh, COVID uh, incident. Uh, so we have met and established that group as of last week. 
Uh, that group is uh, comprised of members from GISD, uh, faith-based organizations, other nonprofits, and city officials. And business. And businesses, businesses. yes. So the COAD means communities? Community organizations active in disaster. Right. It's based off of the national VOAD, which is voluntary. It has nothing to do with COVID. It has COAD nothing to do, has nothing to do with COVID Correct. as far as the name goes. Yes. I just don't want people to be confused. This is a permanent uh, organization mm -hmm. we're putting in place locally. And the first um, item that they're helping us with is COVID-19. Yes. So please visit rowletready.com for information on resources, to donate funds, to volunteer, and to indicate you have needs, please email needs at rowletready.com. And all that information is on the rowletready.com website and is also on rowlet.com forward slash COVID-19 page on the city website. Also, it's very, very, very important. We've been publicizing this a lot <laughs> over the last couple weeks, but also before that. But it's very important to sign up for Connect Rowlet. Uh, that's a system that can provide immediate updates to our entire uh, population base that signed mm -hmm. up for that. And we've been using that a couple times this week. Mm -hmm. And you can sign up for Connect Rowlet by visiting our website. Also, please visit our website and Facebook page often because this information is being updated hour to hour. Yes. Email cac at rowlett.com or call 972-412-6100 for questions about essential household activities. Email businesscovid19 at dallascounty.org for questions about essential business activities. The city and the Rowlett Chamber are also assisting with questions about essential business activities. Email needs at rowlettready.com if you need local assistance from our local volunteers. I also want to mention uh, some new restrictions on trash pickup, and this is related to the health and safety of our um, very important men and women that are servicing our garbage and recycling needs. Please, you must put your garbage in sacks and close up those sacks and then put them in the poly cart. We don't want loose trash that our uh, individual uh, garbage collectors have to touch and put themselves at risk from a health standpoint. So please put your garbage in bags and close up those bags and then put those bags in your poly carts. As of this moment, you do not have to bag and should not bag your recyclables. So I'm going to close by saying please Stay informed, stay kind, stay safe, and most important, stay home. Thank you, Rowlett. <laughs>